What's up, YouTube? It's your boy, Lunar. And uh, being it, seeing that it is the 10-year anniversary. Damn, my hair got too much hair. Seeing it being the 10-year anniversary of Destiny today, I wanted to, I was going to, I don't know, just ramble about how much I love Destiny, but that's not really the uh, atmosphere right now. And, uh, you know, they just announced a bunch of 10 year anniversary stuff. So I may, I may, uh, get into that tonight. Oh, well for y'all, it'll be Tuesday, but today, Monday is the 10 year anniversary that destiny came out, which is crazy to think about today marks 10 years. And, uh, it's kind of sad that like the state of the game is where it's at, you know? And uh, I wanted to watch this video from Shadow. He's been making Destiny videos for a minute. And uh, just to see, because everybody's making like all these uh, goodbye Destiny videos. And like, you know, trying to see everybody's headspace. And it, and it is going to be very hard to uh, what's the word? It's going to be hard for you know, to keep people engage in the destiny but if anything this is the perfect time to let people come to destiny starting next year i wanted it to be this year but next year seems like a very good starting point for a lot of people you know start fresh start new you ain't gotta know nothing about the past 10 years and stuff and but a lot of the destiny vets feel kind of you know sad especially like with all the layoffs and stuff that just happened and so i want to see what uh, shadow has to say on the topic and uh you know i don't know what to expect for destiny especially with frontiers they just showed off like well they didn't show off anything but they just showed what the um you know, they're going to do, like, two expansions and stuff, and two expan uh, an expansion every six months. So, so it's two a year, and then it's going to have, like, two major updates in between. So those will be, like, the seasons. And it's, like, a bunch of smaller content stuff. I don't know, like, it seems like it's a good idea, but just how it's going to play out. The thing that stuck out to me most during the Vidoc or video or whatever the the uh, twab or whatever you want to call it was that the story isn't going to be linear it's going to like you could play the missions in any order i guess kind of like how they did forsaken you know but you was just going to like you know the bosses the story made sense but like it was still like a, a linear progression, but you got to fight the bosses in any order. And so what, you know, are they going to do stuff like that in every expansion? I don't know. It's kind of weird. But the sentiment for a lot of the streamers, though, the ones that have been doing this for years are very low. So I'm not going to hold y'all up. Let's start this video. Oh, please. You know, like, comment, subscribe. I appreciate everybody, you know, getting the views back right. I appreciate y'all. And uh, let's uh, let's go from there. Uh, the title of the video is Goodbye Destiny 2. And so when we all learned of the layoffs last year, many players assumed that we had hit rock bottom. But we were wrong, because all of this has happened recently, and now we really need to discuss the future of Destiny, what that means for you as a player, what it means for Bungie as the studio, and also what it means for content creators. Because by the way, I think there is a pretty large chance that the large Destiny content creators simply stop making videos within the next year or two. I'm also going to cover my own personal plans because I have reached a decision on whether or not I will continue making Destiny content going forward. Now a lot of this started with this tweet from Glad, and I'm sure many of you have seen it. It basically just talks about the episode and seasonal model being repetitive, but this part at the end is really the part that I want to talk about, because it says Destiny needs a complete restart. New everything. Nothing carried over. 
And I think really this is a debatable topic if you are a current player of the game, because you know, we have seven years of investment. Many players like have their vaults, they have all these items, they have all these weapons. And I can understand why some people might not want to part with these to do a- I don't necessarily want to start over, but I, this is what I would like. I would like them to do a Call of Duty type model where there's a hub for like cuz you know how like there's warzone and then say you want to play call you want to play Call of Duty 3 Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 so you install everything to do with Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 be it the online the story this and the third right and so you can install that but say you want to go to Black Ops I mean Cold War and so you install Cold War 2. So you got your hub where you can do Warzone and stuff. And all your stuff that you have from this game can carry over. Like, whatever you buy in Modern Warfare 3, you can use it in Warzone. And whatever you buy in Cold War, you can use it in Warzone. And sometimes, like, say you got Modern Warfare 2 installed. So all the guns you got in Modern Warfare 2 you could use it in Modern Warfare 3. And I'm pretty sure whatever guns you got in Cold War, you can use in Black Ops 6. You get what I'm saying? But all of it can be used in, in Warzone. What Destiny needs is like a hub to where like you got the Destiny 1 locations and the Destiny 2 location. And then you got the story content, all the story shit. If you want to play all the story from start to finish, you can install all that. All of that is there. And then whatever the new stuff is, you buy it and you can install it. There needs to be like a Destiny Hub app and then you install like, say you want to do like the raids and stuff from Destiny 1. So you install Destiny 1 and all the raids and stuff is and stuff is there. You know what I'm saying? Instead of them porting it all to D2, even though now they would have to like, all you need is wrap the machine really. But like say you got Destiny 2 Basic, like Destiny 2 Launch. And so all the stuff that was in Destiny 2 launch is there. All the story, Forsaken, everything. And then let's just say you got new Destiny 2. Well, you got Destiny 2. Let's see Destiny 2. What would you call it? Like Destiny 2 base. And then you have like Destiny 2 the Shadow Saga, right? And so the Shadow Saga is what? Uh, Shadow Keep Beyond like Witch Queen Lightfall Final Shape right boom and then you got destiny destiny 2 frontiers right so say you install this destiny hub and you got frontiers installed but in destiny 1 so you can do wrath of the machine and whatever raid like you know the new apollo raid right say you want to play destiny 2 base then you got the leviathan raids and all of the raid layers and stuff but then you want to do some dun and you got the dungeons and stuff and like they can separate the install and have all that and then say you got the destiny hub is just strikes crucible and uh strikes crucible gambit you know just the normal stuff you do that's the free-to-play stuff the destiny hub is the free-to-play stuff and so it's every in the free-to-play stuff that's what's there so trials like say you just got the trials players all that stuff is there whatever is part of the free-to-play stuff that is there and then all the stuff that we pay for is also there so say like the hub will be like the the Let's just say the hub is the tower. You can go to the tower and then go to like strikes and do all that. And that's only what the hub is. But like the actual planetary locations is part of what you install. So like say you want to go to the Cosmodrome to the, uh, what was that place called in D1? Um, the quarantine zone, right? You have to install Destiny 1. So you can go to Earth and you can see all these locations, right? But you had to have Destiny 1 installed. And then you can go there. And then boom. You can see all that. And you can go do all that stuff and run around there. Say you want to do Leviathan. OG Leviathan. You got to have Destiny base installed. Say you want to run around Titan. You got to have Destiny 2 base installed. Say you want to run around fucking uh, Neo Muna. You got to have. You see what I'm saying? And that way we can pick and choose what we want. And they don't have to like keep taking shit away that stuff that we paid for and we can experience it as a whole my thing is that i always want to experience destiny 
as a whole and you can't is literally you have to have been there and like i don't like this seasonal stuff going away hell even so they can take the misses away and just keep the mission that's tied to like the strike stuff and then like say you get to a season so say you playing through the entire story of destiny and you get to the seasons between forsaken and, and shadow keep well those are cutscenes. so like season uh let's just say you get to season uh black armory season so you watch the story content stuff and then they can bring back the forges for people to do and you can be you can go do the forges and then say somebody's like watching all those con those videos those cutscenes and stuff and then boom you go in there and um you do the forges every for everything the forges tied to the seasonal stuff for this and then say you wanted to go do what was that damn season of the loss you know what i'm saying and you run around the dreaming city doing a season of loss and then say you want to do fuck what's that damn season everybody fucked with uh season of the haunted and so you when you click on the hub for the leviathan you could say d2 you could do base leviathan or you can run around and do haunted leviathan you get what i'm saying and so say like people's running through the d2 first campaign and they want to do just regular leviathan shit or just run around regular vibe and with the underworld and all that stuff like the um it's just so much that you can do that i feel like if they took that call of duty like how they did warzone as like that hub and then had everything separate and then you can and then how called you got the multiplayer separate install you got the campaign separate install and you got the what is it zombie separate install all those stuff can be split up as separate installs destiny can do all of that bro if destiny did that oh my gosh i would be in heaven i would clear bro i would fucking install a two terabyte ssd in a heartbeat if destiny did that bro i would oh my god i would be so ecstatic if they did that and that way everything's connected bro and then your character that you don't have from since destiny one destiny two you can use that character to run around everything like you did my main character my character that i created back 10 years ago i could run around in a fucking cosmodrome not the new cosmodrome i mean the d1 cosmodrome run around with d1 blueberries go to the d1 moon well i mean all of i mean but how they doing everything all the plant like out like let's just take mars you got the d1 mars d2 mars right so you can run around both of the all four of those sections bro it's bro it's i i don't see why they haven't thought of something like that i would love if they did something like that the chances of one of them seeing this video is so slim to none but i feel like that'll make everybody happy and then that way whatever they make new they can just lock off you know what i'm saying like say you're gonna go to the new story and then say they say say they make destiny 2 frontiers like they come out with frontiers and whatever like the expansion after what was behemoth the, the, the expansion after behemoth you go into a new planet a new actually a new galaxy or whatever let's just say they bring in a new galaxy whatever the only things you could take to that new galaxy is whatever that was in frontiers all your all your vault stuff from it's kind of like how it is in fucking call of duty like we can't use our once a certain game like you can't use your modern warfare guns in modern warfare 3 you get what i'm saying but you can go download warzone 1 and use all that stuff that's what i'm getting at so it's just like whatever the expansion at the behemoth you know frontiers 2 whatever the next year at the front year 12 all my stuff from you know the first 10 years i can't bring but the stuff that we did in frontiers those weapons we can bring we can use and stuff in the new in the new solar system and that way is a way of starting over without completely starting over but every time anytime you want to use your stuff just go to those dead go come back to the the the, the solar go back to mars or whatever and then you all those weapons 
are in the crucible and stuff and then make it to where like certain weapons like whatever like playlists say they had like a, a frontiers pvp right so you can only use guns that's in frontiers and then like a new game mode like trials like just certain guns you can't use only legendary guns or something you get what i'm saying and no fucking like supers and stuff that way your account and your character and stuff like you won't ha you won't have to lose everything bro and everything could be tied to that game but you can use it in the main hub world i don't know i feel like it's something there to that there's something there that i wish that like they could do and i know they can do would it take time hell yeah but like that's just something that's been in my head for years, bro. Ever since they started doing what they, what Call of Duty started doing that like Warzone thing, and you can just like click. I love that. Like, like right now I got Modern Warfare Three installed, Warzone, and and Black Ops on my PS Five. But on my P on my on my Xbox Series X, I just got Vanguard installed in Warzone. So. It's something there. A complete restart, a complete fresh start. But the thing is, from an external perspective, from someone who doesn't play the game, from that perspective, it is 100% fact that Destiny 2 would benefit from a complete restart where nothing carries over and it's a complete fresh experience. Now, if you want proof of this, look no further than the final shape. This is one of the best expansions we've ever seen, arguably the best. And yet, it sold worse than Lightfall, it sold worse than Witch Queen, it sold worse than Beyond Light, it sold worse than basically every single expansion in Destiny history, yeah, simply because good. there are no new people coming into this game. It's a slowly deteriorating player base that is just simply not getting enough new life from new players and returning players. And it's just an ever dwindling supply of people like us who are the hardcores who have been around for quite a while. From where I'm standing, there is no world where Destiny ever thrives again without a Destiny 3, or at least some kind of major sequel or other game. Because just continuing with Destiny 2, the new player experience is so bad, the game is so bloated, there's so much going on, it's so complicated, that it is completely impenetrable from a new player's perspective. And I've made several videos on this, it's basically accepted by every single player that this is an extremely hard game to get into. Now, I think that Destiny could survive without a Destiny 3, and I really hope that's what's happening, because Bungie's plan is to just kind of reduce the amount of content and see how things go over the next two years. And I really hope that the game survives, but I don't really think the game will ever thrive until we see a new title or a new sequel. One of the other ideas that Glad's tweet touched on that I really identify with and I've been saying for years is this idea of innovation, because Destiny moving forward cannot simply continue to recycle the same content, the same formula, the same cookie cutter seasonal model that we've had for the last decade basically. I know that it is a high bar because it's a lot harder to make stuff that's truly original than to just recycle the same stuff that kind of works as we slowly fade into obscurity. But there is simply no world where the future Destiny game is successful and at the same time it pulls the same outdated garbage that we had in way back in Destiny 1. The game definitely needs to maintain its core, its core identity, you know, there's clearly something that makes Destiny a special game that people continue coming back to over and over. So we need to maintain like the MMO elements that Destiny has, we need to maintain like the loot chase, the progression, the social aspects, but I would say that basically every single system in the game needs a complete overhaul, a complete redesign, just something new, something fresh and exciting. And I don't really think this gets talked about enough, but something that I think makes the best Destiny expansions the best is that they actually change the core of the game. Like if you look at the Taken King, it was objectively speaking very good for its content. But the thing that nobody really talks about was that it was also very good for the fact that it just changed everything within the game and made it work completely different. Like, infusion was different, leveling was different, like literally every single progression system in the entire game was completely overhauled and changed to make it feel fresh and exciting. 
And as Destiny has gone over the years, the expansions have changed less and less. Like, you know, the Pathfinder system, okay, you know, that's kind of something that changes up from the bounties, but that's like a fairly small change in the grand scheme of things. Like there has not been a lot that has changed in recent expansions. And I think that if we really want to bring Destiny back into the limelight, if we really want to re-engage players and make them feel like it's not the same experience when you load into the orbit screen and see your character screen, like if we really want people to feel that it's something new and something exciting, we need to innovate and create something that actually is fresh and unlike anything that we've ever seen. And that is risky. I mean, the more that you shake up the formula, the more that you risk alienating players and making them feel like this is no longer the destiny that they've grown to love. But at the same time, I think it's a risk that absolutely needs to be taken because as we stand right now, we're just slowly heading down the path of obscurity and there is really no chance of us coming out of this unless things actually change in a very significant manner. Here's another tweet that I saw talking about this, and it says, If Destiny 3 happens, they need to move on from the seasonal model, the engram focusing system, titles, Trials of Osiris, Gambit, Dungeons, Raids, all PvP modes, exotic missions, and Battlegrounds. Enough is enough. And to be clear, I don't agree with all of this, because obviously I don't think it would be the greatest idea to get rid of all PvP and raids, because those are kind of the core things that make Destiny Destiny. But at the same time, I think I like where this tweet is coming from because it's just it's just asking for significant change, significant redesign and significant I wouldn't play the, I wouldn't play Destiny if it didn't have the raids. Man, the raid jack is made me, bro. I can't wait till the new one come in. I got Lightfall uh Lightfall. I got all the 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 ones for the dark except for Beyond Light. Because I wasn't playing the game then. I didn't play it when it first came out. Which ones I got? Final Shape, Lightfall, Witch Queen. Crown of Sorrow. And the both raid rings. Yeah. significant exciting stuff i mean if you look at all of these things like okay let's look at titles trials of osiris gambit dungeons like these are all things that came out five to ten years ago like literally nothing on this list came out within the past like two years like literally nothing in here is actually new and we just keep getting this dungeons and Oh shit, Dungeons came out in Forsaken. Never mind, let me shut up. Same things within these same boxes over and over, and that just leads to people feeling like, oh, there's a new dungeon? Okay, great, but it's still a dungeon. You know, like, imagine if they created a new Trials of Osiris. That's why it was such an uh, attractive and exciting activity back in the day. It's just a shell of its former self now because it's been literally 10 years of trials. Like, how many years can trials go on over and over without any change before people just get tired of it? I don't believe that. I mean, again, going back to Call of Duty, them niggas play Call of Duty forever. Like, niggas in Call of Duty, listen, I'm really, the reason I'm saying I'm bringing up a lot of Call of Duty is because because of Destiny, I've been going back playing Call of Duty. Like, my, I get my online itch now from Call of Duty. And with that being said, Call of Duty is, but like they lit, they not really lit, but it is it is refreshing enough every year with a new game. But I do see where some people, you know, get tired of buying a new game every year, and that's where Warzone come in. You ain't gotta buy every Call of Duty every year. You can buy the ones you like, and then boom, you good to go, and you can play Warzone. You can play Warzone forever. And then, you know, the, they they started innovating the Warzone shit, which uh, my brothers and them love. Like, they love Warzone. They play Warzone nonstop, bro. I can't do it, but I see why they do it. You know what I'm saying? And just picture if, like, they started doing stuff like <laughs> Warzone jackets or something. One of the other things that we heard from the recent news is that Bungie leadership... I do want to do the uh, Call of Duty raid. I want to do that. So if y'all y'all do the raid in Call of Duty, y'all hit me up. I want to I want to just see the difference. If I get addicted to the Call of Duty raids, I'm in there. It considers it too risky to make a Destiny three. 
which I find extremely interesting considering that they've put all of their resources into developing these other incubation projects over the last few years, and then they subsequently scrapped them, effectively wasting all of that money, all of that dev time that they could have been putting into Destiny 3 all these years, just to make these other games that they deleted and laid people off over. And the other thing that you can look at is that Destiny 2 was about as bad as it could get at launch. Like Destiny 2 launched the most bare bones, the most boring, the most progressionless. There was no end game. Destiny 2 was almost as bad as it could possibly be when it first came out. And sure, it did almost die. But still, it became one of the most profitable, one of the most successful, one of the most played games of all time, and it started out in an absolutely horrible state. So like, how much worse could Destiny 3 actually get? You know, like, it would be pretty difficult to make Destiny 3 worse than Destiny 2 at launch. So I don't really see how they put out Destiny 3 and it is a bad decision. It's a risky decision. I no, what, what my problem is with how they did Destiny, how they treat us Destiny fans, is that we do all this stuff for Destiny, buy the merch, buy jackets, buy the games, buy shit in game, all for them to take that money and go make marathon. Like they've been investing into other stuff and it's just like, that's not fair to us. Like, yeah, like picture if, you know the PS5 coming out, picture if they would have started Destiny 3 when they started working on marathon. Bro, the end of, bro, if, if, if we would have got the final shape and then at the final shape, they you, they set us up with some, you know, the episodes or whatever. Then they announced, fuck it, what if Frontiers was Destiny 3? And they announced Destiny 3. Oh, my fucking God. Niggas will be going ape shit right now. They will be going crazy. Like, for, and then, like, they announced Frontiers and a new galaxy, new. We're going to, like, all the Cabal home where all this, this shit that's in the lore that we probably never gonna go to now. Bruh, it's insane what they, how how excited the fan base would be right now. But now it's just like, everybody's like, what's the point? We I think that making five other games that are unrelated to Destiny is far more risky than making a Destiny 3, because you basically know that people are gonna come over and engage with Destiny 3 simply based on the reputation of the previous two games. Yep. As it stands right now, there are basically two groups of players who could potentially play Destiny. There are the existing players, the veteran players, and then there's also the casual and new players. And right now, the casual and new players basically hate this game and they refuse to try it because the new player experience is so unbelievably garbage. On the other hand, there's the veteran players, and many of us have just quit the game because Destiny has just ended its major saga and we've gone back into the seasonal lull of episode content. That is basically the same exact thing as Seasons. And also we've just learned that Bungie is going to be scaling back the game and giving us less content than ever before, which is not exactly an exciting thing to look forward to. So yeah, as it stands right now, Destiny 2 is un- And it was crazy is that when Destiny dies next year, they're gonna like they're gonna be looking like bro what, what's the point like they, they're trying to find the reasons to where they can just end destiny to me it seems like they're trying to find a reason sony especially sony i don't really well let me not say sony but somebody is trying to find a reason to hand it off to sony and they can just become an in-house studio dependent on sony and then they just start making whatever sony wants you know what I'm saying? And like, you know, Sony treats their companies with luxury. Like, look, you know, but the companies that get that luxury, like fucking Insomni, uh, Insomnia, is it Sony again? Uh, damn, what's the damn company? Uh, Naughty Dog, fuck it, uh, fuck, the people that did Spider Man can't think of that company name but like you know they get you know prime time luxury but they've been with sony for years you know what i'm saying and so they have an idea you know sony going back on like yeah go like insomniac my fault like when they made spider-man you know sony was like yeah we got we already got the spider-man license gonna do it gonna do you thug this with that but with bungie is just like 
they bought Bungie and like it's just been failure after failure. So now it's gonna be like one of those things where Sony had to come in and basically force them to do what they want to get this shit on track. Because I do not see Marathon getting Bungie out of this hole. Especially you keep firing people. Every time every time y'all release something, y'all keep firing folks. And it's just like I don't I don't even see how anybody could be working at Bungie happily thinking that they their job is safe at the marathon and it's just like they got all this money and instead of doing what they should have done investing into another destiny which is literally lightning the bottle they want to they want to they're chasing these dreams of being a multi fucking a multi uh what is it? they're trying to be a multi a multiple ip studio they're trying to have multiple games coming out of the out of the out of they're trying to be like bethesda they're trying to chase these dreams where they got like multiple games coming out but it's just like you you gotta like you gotta get to that you know what i'm saying like you just got free from act from uh like think about 10 years is not a long time in video game development time all right you just got free from activision like you've been up under somebody for all these years and they were helping you you was under microsoft they were helping you you was under activision they was helping you when you got to yourself you had you couldn't just start doing multiple projects you had to fix destiny and then like you it kind of hit you with a realization when shadow key came out it was like you know kind of i i fuck with every expansion i found something to love by every expansion but it didn't have a lot of content in fucking shadow key and the seasons, the seasons were whack. Like the seasons from from Forsaken and Shadowkeep were just awful. You know what I'm saying? Like it's some stuff that came out of the seasons that people love, but they were truly whack as hell. They didn't really hit their stride to Witch Queen, and then fucked it up with Lightfall. And so it's like you can't even hit two back to back successions at Bungie and you're chasing trying to make other games while you can't even get your main game to hit back to back like Call of Duty didn't start off like that like they had to hit Call of Duty out the park it was Call of Duty and then they made Big Red 1 then they was doing all this stuff and then they hit Call of Duty 2 then Call of Duty 3 then you know when Call of Duty 4 hit they okay they found the stride in Call of Duty 4 and then they, they started doing their thing and adding other studios. Like, it was only two studios then. And they was like, they had enough time to make Call of Duty 1, had enough time to do Call of Duty 2, had enough time to do Call of Duty 3. And they were still building off of each other, helping each other. Like, Treyarch and Infinity War was building off of each other. And then when Call of Duty 4 hit, and then War at War, they was, they was, it was a rat race. They didn't add Sledgehammer till the fucking, um... Uh, uh, Modern Warfare 3, which was at the end of the 360 cycle, and then Sledgehammer didn't even get to make their own game till fucking what was that, Advanced Warfare? Like, they had to build up to that. They was making Call of Duties back on the PS2 days, and then they didn't start doing like doing all this extra shit to the PS4 era, bro. Like, Destiny can't even get two expansions back to back to be some. Destiny 2 drop, whack. Forsaken drop, it's a hit. Shadow Keep drop, whack. Beyond Light drop, whack. Witch Queen drop, out the fucking part. Lightfall drop, whack. Final Shade drop, out the fucking part, but only because we've been on this fucking ride for 10 years. Only because of the witness. Only because of like the core fan base. You had no choice but to hit it out the park. And you had to delay it. And so it's just like, bro, like, I don't know, bro. Like, when I think business-wise, every business thing they do is fucking mistake. When I think, when I think about, like, just the pure uh, fucking, just the love and the artness, like, the art side of me. When I think, like, how I think about music and, like, videos and just cosplay, the art, art side of me destiny's supposed to be fucking star wars at this point 10 years we're supposed to we're supposed to be living like this is supposed to be the video game version of star wars bro 
with all this all this cool shit going on just different planets and, and and just the story you could play from start to finish like what i thought destiny would have was could be art side of me it's not business side they can't get too straight guarantee you frontiers is not going to be it's going to be awful it's going to be cool for people like me because i just find a reason to like anything bungie comes up with but it's not going to be it and with marathon instead of bungie's always been the company that did something new like they changed the game they changed the game with halo they changed the game with destiny but marathon is the first time they're chasing a fad like the tarkov stuff like they, 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 the fucking extraction shooter fad they're chasing and it's just something about marathon to me just doesn't sit right I don't know what about, I don't know what about it. I don't know because of the insider stuff that I've just been hearing this and there, just little stuff I've been hearing or it's just how, how marathons coming about, you know what I'm saying? If they would have stuck to marathon, marathon should have came out like their new halo. If they would have made marathon like their new halo, and made it like a first person shooter or whatever a third person shooter because they've been wanting to do a third person shooter forever if they would have made that and the extraction was like just the online elements but actually had a story and stuff to marathon i feel like it'll be better but there's no story it's just an online only game i can't see bungie not having a story to any of their game it just doesn't sit right nothing about this bows well unsuitable for veteran players and it's unsuitable for new players so it's really left us in a pretty trash situation for everybody also with the confirmation that there will be no more major expansions for the game because they just keep declining year over year it it makes us feel like there's nothing to be excited about there's nothing to look forward to you know like one of the main reasons why into the light was so successful is because we knew right around the corner there's final shape the huge ultimate expansion in destiny one of the greatest things that we've ever seen but now it's like if they do into the light if they release into the light today i think it would do a fraction of the success that it had in the past because there's nothing exciting there's nothing to look forward to there's nothing to prepare for so i don't think that these so-called content packs that are coming in the next few years are going to actually be as interesting as into the light simply because there's nothing big on the horizon Many players have also gotten the closure that they were looking for. I mean, with the conclusion of the story and many of the loose ends that we've had over the years just all getting tied up, many people have just said, all right, that was great, and thank you for the experience, and I'm out. And, I mean, I completely understand it. I mean, I, I obviously am not leaving this game, and I still really love what it has to offer, but I can completely understand why some people have just decided that this is the end for them, and, you know, maybe they will come back with a Destiny 3, but... I think that there are many people out there who will just not come back until there is some major evolution of the game, whether that's a D3 or a spinoff or something of that nature. But yeah, just I don't see that the future of D2 is actually going to do that for them. Another and to expect people to keep coming back and year after year you're giving less and less. Like nobody's going to like you can only be a toxic ex for so long, bro. And we dealt with it for 10 years. You know, you may do good one year, but the next year, you know what I'm saying? It's whatever. It's half ass. You're barely trying. You, you're squeezing. you nickel and diamond us to defeat to other fucking projects. You're taking our money to give to another boyfriend that you really care about that ain't even worth a damn. You get what I'm saying? Like, when you start thinking of Destiny like that, then then you understand, like, the, the player sentiment for real. And you got some of us who just, like, we find destiny content in other ways like i don't find destiny content in just the game like i watch the lore videos you get what i'm saying like i love the lore videos like if it wasn't for like the youtube community and stuff watching like people like shadow by Mylan, astacross cross uh fucking <sighs> so many of them that i can't think of right now uh fuck it but like just 
we find other ways to be in love with destiny so we don't have to just hinder on the game like when the game is bad we're in other places and to expect us to keep coming back year after year and you're and you're telling us it's gonna be less 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 and less so you can milk up fucking marathon this game is going to just be on a lifeline and it's slowly going to go on down so they pull the plug Another thing we need to talk about is the future of content creators in Destiny because like I said earlier I think there's a solid chance that the top content creators are going to be leaving within the next couple of years unless there is some big announcement about the future of Destiny but that all remains to be seen. So the reason why this is is the game is straight up just becoming unsuitable for content creation. My videos that came out during the Lightfall period actually did better than my videos that came out during the Final Shape period. And that was with Lightfall being simply one of the worst expansions that we have ever seen. But there was simply more interest in the game. There were simply more people playing it. And then, you know, after there was a huge fall off after Lightfall and people lost trust in Bungie's ability to tell a cohesive story, you know, Final Shape sold not that well, actually. You know, worse than Lightfall by comparison. Less people played it. There was less people interested in the actual game. You know, basically every single content creator did worse during Final Shape than they did during Lightfall, at least in terms of like raw viewership on YouTube. The period between these expansions also tends to be very rough. I mean, the last few years we've had these really dark periods in like November, October, December, the, those kind of months, the fourth quarter, where things are just generally not that great for content creators because, you know, the hype from the expansion has died off. Things are just getting really slow. And I think that that might actually become kind of the norm because there's not going to be any major expansions anymore and I don't know if the episode model is actually going to be able to carry things enough to keep people interested. I mean right now we are currently like in this moment we are witnessing the fastest population drop off in the history of Destiny 2 on the Steam charts. Like the game has literally never declined faster than it is right now and we are actually approaching yet another all time low literally two months after the final shape came out. So I don't know if things are starting to level off, you know, I think that, you know, content creators can survive as it stands right now. But if it goes and that's crazy to think Final Shape came out two months ago and it feel like it's been out for six months, seven months already. Like that's how much we've not been giving a fuck about Final Shape stuff. That's crazy to think about for real. A whole lot lower than this. I do honestly see many content creators starting to leave the game and I mean, the truth of it is, like, many content creators are running businesses, and many content creators have teams, and having teams is expensive, you know, if you have an editor, if you have a thumbnail designer, whatever, like, these people cost a, sub a substantial amount of money every month, and if Bungie is just going to be focusing on Marathon and not actually putting a lot of resources into making Destiny 2 and making interesting content and people just continue dropping off, um, you know, it might become simply financially unviable for content creators to continue covering this game. Like, imagine you go to work, and you, you work your eight hours, you know, you, you put in some good effort, you know, you have some great results, and then you come home and you lost a hundred bucks. Like, that, that's basically going to be the situation for some of these bigger content creators who have people working on their videos for them. Because, yeah, I mean, if they put out a video and it doesn't get, you know, a ton of views, then they simply lost money on that video because they spent more to make it than it actually made them in return. As for my personal plans, when it comes to the coverage of Destiny on my channels, I think that I'm going to continue covering this game until one of two things happens. Number one, if Bungie announces that there is basically no future for the game, you know, if we can tell that things are just headed downward and nothing is going to happen in the future, at that point, I might decide to call it quits. Or I might decide, you know, I'll put out a few final videos, I'll put out the projects I'm working on, then I'll have to move on to something else. And the second situation is that if it becomes simply financially unviable to continue, like I was mentioning earlier, you know, like if we get to the point where I start losing money on every single video that I make, that's obviously not something that is going to be sustainable and I just, I'm going to be forced to move on. So until one of those two things happens though, I'm in it for the long run. You know, I really love making videos about this game. I still like playing this game for, for what it's worth. I mean, I, cer I certainly don't play it as much as I used to in the past, but I still really love doing what I do, and I hope that I can continue doing this for the foreseeable future. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this discussion on the future of the game, as grim as it may be looking, and I'll catch you in the next video.
Well, he not lying, bro. He is not lying. I feel like him. I just love Destiny. You know, I'm not really trying to be. I would love to be a content creator in the space of Destiny, but I don't see that ever happening like I want. But uh, it's a sad. It's sad thinking about Destiny and how how they're treating it. You know, but everything can't last forever. You know what I'm saying? We eventually had to say goodbye to Halo, even though it's kind of lasting forever. But it's it's a shell of its former self. I don't ever want Destiny to be a shell of its former self. Destiny universe is just too luscious, too. You can breathe new life into it whenever they get a chance. They just got to find somebody passionate as fuck for it. And I don't think, I don't even think people at Bungie are passionate for Destiny anymore. And that's the problem. If we get, we got to find somebody. We got, they got to find somebody that's passionate about that game that wants to breathe new life into it and make it what it's supposed to be destiny is like they want to be an mmo it's supposed to be a true mmo where we can fly our ship in space on planet to planet landing on the planet getting out the worlds can be a pvp world like it's supposed to be how it is in the lore like pull up on a nigga bump with him right there have a 1v1 in the middle of fucking uh what's that damn uh European dead zone right there in front of fucking Devrim K and them. All types of shit supposed to be happening. I wish I wish uh, it can get to where say you want to do an old raid. I wish the 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 AI system was smart enough to where you could do raids with like Zavala and Icora and them and all I don't know, it's a lot of shit that I wished could happen in the game, but we're not there yet. Or just make it like a true MMO shit. Like, hell, same reason why I love fucking Final Fantasy fourteen. You know what I'm saying? But it is what it is. Uh, I will see y'all in the next one. Thank you for coming along this ride with me. And, uh, yeah, if you love Destiny, put it in the comments. Let me know. Like, comment, subscribe. And I'll see y'all in the next one. Peace out.